This clip of the Texas Bucket List is brought to you by Spirit of Texas Bank, Slovacek Sausage, Germania Insurance, TX Burger, and RV Source. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and this week we start things off in Goliad, at a site that's not just important to Texans, but to people all over the world. You see, here you'll find history, you'll find lore, and you can even stay the night. While watching a new day dawn over Presidio La Bahia, it's hard not to think of all the amazing South Texas sunrises this moving piece of Lone Star State history has seen. Originally constructed in 1749, the Presidio was built by the Spanish to protect its missions and colonize this territory. Most people remember the, the revolutionary history that's here because of, of Fannin and his men, but, but we, we're Texas history all the way back to the start. Scott McMahon is the director of the fort that's at the forefront of Texas's battle for independence. But before the Texan army met its demise under Colonel James Fannin, the Presidio already had a long history of soldiers sacrificing their lives for this piece of land. The Presidio is probably the most, single most fought over piece of property in Texas history because it starts all the way back in you know, the, the, the late 17, early 1800s and it runs all the way up through the 1830s. Battles between Mexico and Spain during the War for Mexican Independence were just the start. Mexican forces took over the Presidio after winning independence from Spain in 1821. But just 14 years later, the Texas Army gained control, setting the stage for the bloodiest battle for Texas's independence. Just eight days after the fall of the Alamo, Fannin was ordered to retreat by Sam Houston. But he waited five days before complying and was captured by Mexican forces at the Battle of Coleto Creek. Those men were imprisoned in the church at Presidio La Bahia while the Mexican army awaited orders on the men's fate. When you consider the fact that they had, uh, had been in a battle, a lot of them were wounded, they were tired, uh, they were kept here for almost a week and from the records we have, were given very little food or water, if any at all. Uh, it was probably a very miserable uh, existence for these guys for that period of time. On Palm Sunday of 1836, Santa Ana ordered the 300 troops be executed. So the men were escorted out of the Presidio and paid the ultimate price for Texas. Santa Ana decided that rather than have these men spared and, and paroled back to the U.S., he'd go ahead and make an example of them and he, and he had them killed. Colonel Fannin and his soldiers are buried at a mass grave just a few hundred yards from La Bahia. A huge marker lists each one of the men, and if you listen close enough, you'll swear you hear the battle cry of the Texas Revolution. You can pay your respects to the founders of our fine state by exploring the grounds they gave their last breath for. This cannon that we have here is one of the original guns used during the uh, time of the, the uh, Presidio. Pretty sure that Fannin actually used this gun. Definitely would have been around at that time, was probably used even before that. Fannin has some of the Spanish guns that were left here and it was probably left over from that period. With such a long history, artifacts are constantly being found around the fort. You do see it from time to time. Um, the ants kick it up, the gophers kick it up, the rain washes it out. I mean, it's still here, it's, it's just below the surface. So what we have in here is a collection of artifacts that were dug up on site. Uh, our, our museum is unique because everything we have in these cases was dug on site. It was used here starting in 1749 up through the 1830s and 40s. So all this was found here? All the stuff was dug up here. The, the lance heads uh, were used by the Presidial Troopers that were here. The, the piece that you see up there is trigger guard off of a, off of a Spanish musket. So you see a lot of things here that you don't see at other museums. That includes a bell that's seen better days, but has an incredible story to tell. So we have this bell here that um, 
originally came from the Alamo. It, uh, it was one of the bells that uh, was at the Alamo. Of course, the, the church there, the, the roof collapsed. They didn't need it anymore. They sent it over to the mission across the river. Once the mission got their bells from, from the foundry, it was sent here to the Presidio and it's been here ever since. But it's not just the history of Presidio La Bahia that makes it well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. It's also the fact you can spend the night here. Uh, they, they were set up originally for priest quarters for the, for the parish priest. They weren't being used anymore and uh, they said, well, let's just make a neat thing. This incredibly unique opportunity gives you even more time to reflect on this part of Texas history. Truly soak it in and swear to yourself, you didn't see things moving in the middle of the night. How many Spanish Presidios can you stay at in, in Texas or in, in the U.S., you know, just, just in general? This just scratches the surface of the amazing story and lore of Presidio La Bahia in Goliath. And unless you make the trip, you'll truly never appreciate what an amazing stop it is. Presidio La Bahia is the only fully restored Presidio west of the Mississippi River. It is the only Presidio you can go to in Texas and look at. It's very much a place to go and visit, uh, very unique, and uh, it's, it's exciting to be able to walk the grounds here.